It's been an incredible week for gaming news, and we are going to get into some showcase recap stuff in a little bit. But first, let's talk about why everyone's still upset over Starfield's frame rate. They're still upset. They're so... After it was discovered that Redfall would be locked at 30 frames per second for Xbox consoles, many speculated that Starfield, a much larger game being produced by the same publisher, would also be capped at 30 FPS. After the Starfield Direct last Sunday, Todd Howard confirmed with IGN that the game would be indeed capped at 30 FPS on Xbox consoles and furthermore would not have a performance mode. Howard explained, quote, I think it'll come as no surprise giving our previous games what we go for. Always these huge open worlds, fully dynamic hyper detail where anything can happen and we do want to do that. It's 4K on the X, it's 1440 on the S, we do lock it in at 30 because we want that fidelity we want all that stuff. We don't want to sacrifice any of it. Upon Howard's confirmation, it was as if millions of gamer voices suddenly cried out in terror and then were silenced. That's a that's a Star Wars reference because it's Starfield. Ah. Makes sense. Only to cry out instead in the comments, on forums, and on social media. Yeah, people were not thrilled. And the arguments debating the acceptability of 30 FPS for a Bethesda RPG engulfed the entire galaxy of gamers. The galaxy thing. Going back to Star Wars or Star Wars. The top comment on IGN's interview took a mostly level-headed tone, stating, quote, no one has an issue with 30 FPS. They have an issue of not having the option to play at a lower resolution for 60 FPS. However, according to Digital Foundry's tech-savvy John Linneman, resolution likely isn't the limiting factor. Instead, it's the CPU used by Xbox Series X and S. Linneman pointed to the Sandwich Pirate bit during the Starfield Direct to remind gamers that Starfield tracks the location and position of all sorts of arbitrary items in the world, so simply reducing the resolution resolution wouldn't automatically net a win for frame rates. A game developer from Sony Studios Santa Monica also spoke up in defense of Starfield's frame rates when YouTuber Dreamcast Guy lambasted people for defending quote unfinished games. God of War environment artist Danny Carlo replied quote it's not a sign of an unfinished game it's a choice. 60 FPS on this scale will be a large hit to the visual fidelity. My guess is they want to go for a seamless look and less pop in. Of course Starfield is an open world but as the game, so when it comes to bugs and other shenanigans, Poppin is probably going to be the least of everyone's worries. Xbox is talking a big game though. During Summer Games Fest, head of Xbox Game Studios, Matt Booty, told Giant Bomb that if the game shipped today, it would have, quote, the fewest bugs of any game from Bethesda. Ooh, big talk. Hey! I laughed, booty. I laughed at booty. booty. I didn't mean to. Booty. You have a great name. You have a great name. You think Booty and Bowser ever work together? <laughs> Head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, chimed in saying Booty tells him, quote, every QA person in our entire company is playing Starfield right now. Not for work. They're just yeah, playing because they have access to it. <laughs> if you have ever played any Bethesda game, you know how bold these claims are. So we shall wait and see. Starfield is set to launch September 6th, and it looks like the fancy $300 collector's edition that comes Jesus. with a smartwatch is already sold out. Also, there's a controller a headset. Beaks That's a brought, lot of money. Beaks bought the controller already. Did you get it yet? Did it, has it shown up at your house yet? Yes! Where, <laughs> <laughs> there are more stories to get to, but first we wanted to remind you that we will be at RTX in Austin, Texas from July 7th to the 9th. I mean, we'll be in Austin, Maybe. Texas always. I feel like we're going to be in Austin, Texas It's just forever. RTX happens to be that one. Yeah, week. but there's going to be panels, meetups, live shows, and there's even an inside gaming game show. So head on over to RTXAustin.com to get your tickets, and we'll see you there. And if you show up, Liz will get a tattoo with you. I can't agree to that one. Let's get back to the news. We are going to recap all of the major showcase announcements from the Summer Games Fest in about a minute. Can you so, read that fast? Buckle up. I'll, I cannot. I'll, be a I'll start the I'll uh, start the timer. Go. First up is the Summer Game Fest opening showcase. It was a really ad heavy show, but the highlights included Sonic Superstars, a modernized take on a 2D Sonic co-op, a nice long trailer for the anticipated soul like Lies of P, gameplay trailer for Alan Wake 2, a gameplay trailer for Space Marines 2, and a full length trailer for Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Whew. Then there was a big Xbox game showcase, which had tons of announcements, but the big ones were a trailer for Fable, which reportedly featured gameplay, but it looked too good. A more believable gameplay trailer for <laughs> Avowed, a trailer for Hellblade 2, the official reveal of Persona 3 Remake, the cinematic trailer for Star Wars Outlaws, and the reveal of In Exile's new game, Clockwork Revolution, and of course, new trailers and an entire direct for Starfield. Ubisoft actually kind of crushed it this year with the reveal of 
of a 2D Prince of Persia game called Lost Crown, gameplay for Assassin's Creed Mirage, and 10 minutes of gameplay walkthrough for Star Wars Outlaws, which looked good. Lastly, the Capcom Showcase showed a trailer for its new samurai-themed action horror title, Path of the Goddess, a new trailer for Exile Primal, an HD remaster collection for Ace Attorneys 4, 5, and 6, and finally a deep dive into Dragon Dogma 2, which looked fantastic so far. We know we didn't get to everything, and we skipped a lot of awesome indies, so let us know in the comments your favorite trailer or game from any of the showcases. Overwatch fans have had it rough since the launch of Overwatch 2, but now Blizzard has unsurprisingly riled them up all over again. It's what they're good at, the shaking babies. I'm, I'm Blizzard. <laughs> After recently canceling Hero Mode, Blizzard has decided to put the story content they did manage to make behind a $15 paywall. More specifically, the content in question is only accessible by purchasing a bundle, which grants, quote, permanent access. Is that even okay. true nowadays? Permanent access is the thing. I don't thing. trust them. I don't, I don't trust them. We should, we should play a good game by a good company like Diablo 4. To three Overwatch 2 invasion story missions. That was the permanent access as well as sojourn a legendary sojourn skin and 1000 overwatch <gasps> coins Ooh, that's like rybux there's also a premium version of the bundle for 40 dollars, which adds a battle pass more coins and two more legendary skins <gasps> fans are justifiably upset some memed about uninstalling the game and others actually did at adam insane 11 037 wrote quote do they have an ounce of shame at all? This is actually ridiculous. Imagine paying for content that was promised with the whole premise of Overwatch 2. It was a given that Blizzard would charge for story content while keeping Overwatch 2 multiplayer free, but $15 for three missions is a tall order, even for Blizzard. It's like a Route 44. Even for me. Even for you. Staying with Activision, Blizzard. The FTC is still trying its best to stop Microsoft from purchasing the company, but things might not go the regulator's way. Earlier this week, the FTC filed for an injunction. This injunction stops Microsoft from completing its acquisition until the request can be argued in court later this month. It is an interesting move by the FTC because if the injunction is granted, Microsoft will have to wait even longer to complete its deal. However, if the injunction is successfully appealed, Microsoft could potentially close a $67.8 billion deal in just a couple of weeks. I feel like a lawyer right now. That is a lot of money. This could be a sign that the Federal Trade Commission is getting desperate now that Microsoft has received approval on their acquisition plans from multiple regulators around the world, including the European Commission. In addition, even though the UK's Competition and Markets Authority outright rejected the deal, Microsoft has confidently filed an appeal stating that the CMA overlooked a number of details and ran on false evidence. In short, Microsoft might have been positioned to push the deal through without the FTC's approval, so the regulators filed for the injunction. If the deal if the deal isn't completed by July 18th, then Microsoft has to pay Activision Blizzard an extra $3 billion and renegotiate a bunch of terms. So be on the lookout for another update after the preliminary, how do you pronounce that word? Preliminary. Prelimi preliminary. Preliminary injunction hearing at the end of the month. Evan, keep that in there. Absolutely, keep all of it in there. Hey, let's talk about some comments. Last week, we talked about how greedy Twitch was acting with their shady branded content guidelines update, and you all let them have it. We talked about this all last week. It was a big deal, and then immediately went away. Shocker. You also let BK have it. Again, for not knowing who Danny DeVito is. Apparently, our apology and subsequent punishment of watching every season of Always Sunny wasn't enough, so we will be adding to her sentence. See, Borum gave us a good idea of where to start. Writing, I think a more appropriate punishment for not knowing who Danny DeVito is, is to watch Twins with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Junior with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is he also in that as well? I don't well? know he was in Junior, but maybe he was. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's all, that Junior's a terrifying movie, by the oh. way. Also, to watch at least the first few seasons of Taxi and uh, Batman Returns. He's in Batman Returns? He's the penguin in Batman Returns, Beaks. He's the little, he's got the three fingers. Oswald Cobblepot. And he eats a fish raw. It's gross. As well as Throw Mama from the Train great and movie. Romancing the Stone. Also great movie. Seaborum, thank you. And everyone else who commented, thank you. We're going to get this sorted out. BK... Get it together. You please. also you don't need to watch the first season of It's Always Sunny because he came in in the second yeah. season, so that's okay. So that's one less thing for you to worry about. 
All right, let's take a look at this week's new releases. Drop into the gripping journey of Aliens Dark Descent, a squad-based single-player action game in the iconic Alien franchise. Lead your soldiers in real time to stop a new and terrifying kind of xenomorph outbreak on planet Leaf. Aliens Dark Descent is hitting PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One on June 20th. Crash Team Rumble is a 4v4 team-based competition where the iconic heroes and villains of the Crash universe battle to capture more wumpa fruit. It's called wumpa. I had say no that idea. Word on, on you might have to. Can you blur that or bleep that? <laughs> um, then the others. What? And then the you other? have to capture more wumpa fruit than the other to claim oh, victory. Oh, you have to capture more wumpa fruit than the others to claim victory. Use unique hero abilities to battle, defend, and capture key points. Crash Team Rumble is coming to. Good luck with that. PS5. <laughs> Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One June 20th. There you go. The Last Hero of Nostalgia, The Rise of Evil DLC. Embark on a new adventure and delve deeper into the lands of Nostalgia. Go where the integrity of nostalgia, tradition, and progress convergence awaiting your heroism to mold the landscape anew. Are, um, is this like a Mad Libs they just threw <laughs> weird ass words into? I'm sorry, I'm sure the game's fantastic. <laughs> the Last Hero of Nostalgia, The Rise of Evil DLC. Maybe it was evil that was throwing me off. It's PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on June 20th. Become the ultimate badass in Trephang 2, a gory, action-packed FPS set in the distant future. Unleash all hell on your enemies, dodge bullets, and leave a trail of destruction in this hardcore and frenetic, is that how you say the word? Yeah, frenetic. Frenetic yeah. shooter! Yay. Trephang 2, come to PC June 21st. A Pico is a laid-back beekeeping sim game about breeding, collecting, and conserving bees. Set in a series of lush environments, a Pico uniquely combines <laughs> resource gathering, biology, and beekeeping mini games, taking ideas from a mix of real life and fantasy apiculture and floriculture. A Pico is already on PC, but it's coming to the Series X and Xbox One on June 22nd. The Bookwalker, Thief of Tales, is a narrative adventure in which you play as Etienne Quist. A writer turned thief with the ability to dive into a book. Restore your ability to write by traveling between reality and book worlds to steal legendary items like Thor's hammer and Excalibur. Whoa. The Bookwalker, Thief of Tales, coming to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One June 22. Help Dr. Fetus create the perfect Meat Boy <laughs> clone in a unique twist on the tile matching puzzle genre. In classic Meat Boy fashion, an endless cavalcade of devious and deadly traps stand between you and victory in this hardcore puzzle game that will push your skills to the limit. Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine hits the PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Vita on June 22nd. <laughs> Six Days in Fallujah, probably the most controversial game to come out in a while, is pitched as a realistic first-person tactical shooter based on true stories of Marines, soldiers, and Iraqi civilians during the Second Battle of Fallujah. You might want to do some reading before you even consider that one. Six Days of Fallujah, coming to PC June 22nd. Harmony, the fall of Reverie is coming to consoles. The fate of humanity is at stake. Use your gift of clairvoyance to see into the future and stop an apocalypse that threatens the balance between your world and the deities. Harmony, the fall of Reverie hits PS5 and Xbox Series X on June 22nd. Final Fantasy 16, the first fully fledged action RPG in the mainline Final Fantasy series. Clive Rossfield is on a mission to free mankind from its fate and must use the iconic powers at his disposal to overcome every obstacle his enemy lays before him. Final Fantasy 16 coming to PS5 June 22nd. C Smash VRS. Imagine playing the ultimate sport while feeling both stimulated and relaxed. Your mind and body at one with the best music and stunning visuals. Go on a transformative journey to the edge of space and time alone or with a friend. C Smash VRS hits the PSVR2 on June 23rd. Sonic Origin Plus features the Origins, four. Missed the plural. <laughs> Sonic Origins Plus there you go. features the four beloved classic titles in Sonic Origins. The Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3 
and Sonic CD with the remastered visuals, bonus characters, added modes, behind the scenes content, and more. Amy Rose will be a playable character in all four classic games and Knuckles is being added to Sonic CD. 12 Sonic game gear titles are also being added to the collection. That's a lot 12 of, of them. That's too many Sonics, man. Sonic Origins Plus is coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, June 23rd. Yay! That is so much Sonic. There's a whole lot of it. And much like the blue blur, we are about to spin dash our way out of here. Get a pew, 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 pew. We have to do the thing and roll. Animation. If you're sad to see us go, you can catch us streaming every week at twitch.tv slash roosterteeth every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 3 p.m. Central and usually go for about at least four hours or so. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Have yourself an awesome weekend and go Sonic. Yay. Okay, Evan, edit us Pew. like Sonic out like. I'm wearing the there. blue. I'm like, or I'm like Aqua. I'm kind of Sonic-y. Right, wait, you're Sonic. I'm Shadow. Okay, what? <laughs> Is it skins like, here's a skin for you. Like, yeah. and it is like, they you would. skin a human being yeah. and give it to I you found right a now. snake skin in my backyard. <laughs> it was, it's, it's, it was big. It's very scary. Actually, Overwatch found that for you and left it in your backyard. That's why I paid the $40. Yep.